Welcome back to the shop, it's good to see you again. This is the story of this mill plinth. Buckle up, I'll see you after the titles. Not sure you can see this very well, but here's my, my rough sketch of what I'm going to do for the plinth for the mill. Uh, eventually it will look like this, um, with uh, fully enclosed. And uh, I got some design criteria that I had to uh, adhere to. So, um, firstly, the overall height of the of the mill and the base comes to um, 2.1 meters, and my ceiling height here is 2.27 um, uh, meters. So there is a little bit of clearance between the top of the mill when it's fully up and the uh, and the ceiling. So I'm not going to punch a hole in the ceiling. Um, secondly it's got uh, these casters underneath it so that I can uh, effectively push it up against the wall and, uh, and then level it, lower it onto its, um, onto its um, uh, bump stops uh, and, and get it level. But if I need to move it and get into the back to do any, any work on the electronics etc, I can jack it up again, put it on the, on the wheels, wheel it about. That I think is a, is a good solution. Um, now, the, the other problem I've had, and I'll, I'll drop in a shot of the old coolant tank. This, that's the old coolant tank and pump. That's nowhere near big enough. Uh, I worked out that's 12 litres, so that's not enough. It was never enough in the past. Everything had to be scrupulously the filters had to be scrupulously clean, it had to be full to the brim in order for enough coolant to siphon back into the tank uh, to run it continuously and you could only get a, a small dribble of coolant out of it. So in this version I'm going to reuse um, a, a box, a plastic box, uh, and I'll, I'll drop in a, a rough shot of what they look like from a company called the Really Useful Box Company here in the UK. This is an example of, a, of the a really useful box uh, box. They are really quite rigid and they do a, a high strength version of these as well which uh, this is only 18 litres so that this, is, um, this isn't big enough. The one I'm going to get is about twice as, uh, this sort of size but twice the depth so hopefully that should be okay. Uh, and I'm going to go for a 35 litre um, so uh, I've more than doubled the amount of, of coolant that's going to be in in the machine. Um, it's going to, I think, at the moment, it's going to sit in here, and um, uh, and I'm going to have some angled plates under under the mill so that it drains back into the into the tank through some filters. I haven't exactly worked out exactly how that's all going to work, but um, we'll get there as uh, it'll develop as I get there. I'm not going to have bearers like this sitting on top of this. Uh, I've actually I'm got some steel that I've cleaned up with, a, um, with an abrasive disc ready for welding uh, and I'm going to make a, uh, uh, a frame that sits on top of this, this wooden box to spread the load out as much as possible. And I know there have been, uh, there've been a, a couple of comments saying don't make this of wood, um, it will fall off. Uh, probably will, possibly will, who knows, but um, what I am going to do is um, show you the calculations for the, the structural members in this. This is a spreadsheet I bought to do the calculations for the workshop. So it tells you what's, uh, what size of studs you're going to need to cope with the load etc and, and you know what you can achieve it in, how big are the windows, what, what effect that has on it. Racking is, is how much the, the wind will push it over um, so um, all that info is, is calculated with this. So uh, I'm using C16 studs, um, so that's fine. Uh, service class we won't worry about. Um, this is the width. Uh, I'm treating um, the, my square box plinth as basically each of the faces as a wall. Uh, and they're all pretty identical because it's relatively square. So um, that's the uh, the the length of the wall, 1.2 metres, and that's the height, 0.75. Uh, don't worry about the outer plane. These are the size of the studs, so effectively in each corner we've got a 100 mil square chunk of wood, uh, and um, with a stud spacing of 600 mil. Now, 
that's not what I've got. Mine is actually um, 1.2 meters apart. I am going to add some more uh, some more studs. I've left that at 600 mil because that is roughly going to be right ish, uh, uh, and it's um will be skinned in plywood. Although uh, I don't think it will be nine mil, it probably will end up being six mil. So uh, we'll we'll leave that uh, at nine mil, and um, then all you, all this um, the rest of this is automatically calculated. So there we go. This is the important thing: axial compression per stud is thirty nine kilonewtons. Now thirty nine kilonewtons, three point nine metric tons on each one of those studs. So each corner of that, that uh, plinth can cope with four tons just under. Now, because the, the um, stud spacing is not 600, it's not gonna be four, uh, four tons. It, it might drop to a, a ton, but even so, the mill only weighs 100 to 150 kilos. So the net result is that plinth is more than capable of coping with all of the load of that mill for long-term use. My issue, I think, is not the fact that the wood can cope with the load, it's the, the fact that you need to keep the coolant off the wood because uh, um, I'll show you, I'll drop in some shots of what the, the wood that was underneath the old mill installation looked like after, uh, after it had been there for about 15 years. It was manky, to say the least, and rotting. So if I can keep the rot uh, the coolant out of the, the wood, then I can keep the rot away from the wood, and that means that it will survive for many, many years. So um, uh, I made myself a cutting list over here and uh, to, to make these frames up. So um, let's go over to the chop saw and start chopping up wood. Just as an aside, I have um, run the old girl since, uh, uh, since moving it down here, and it certainly still works. So there we go. Oh, let's try the spindle. That looks good. Yeah. Excellent. So let's turn her off until we need to oh, do some more serious work on it. I do like a joystick, makes a workshop smell less like a workshop. For strength, I used two biscuits in each joint. These are 6 inch or 150mm wood screws. I thought it would uh, add a little bit of extra security for this joint. In fact, all the joints.
I cut the baseboard slightly oversized so I could trim it with this router. Yeah, never too old, hey? Having added an extra ply skin, I now need to uh, shave the corner off, as you can see, so that the uh, angle arm will sit flush. Well, there you go. That's good enough for me. These are the bearers that the mill will sit on and they need the uh, ends notched out so they sit flush. Oh dear, now I need the welder. I had a quick practice just to prove to myself I'm as bad as I think I am and then it's up to the real thing. I'm not going to show you my welding because it's appalling. Absolutely appalling. Two grinding discs and some random swearing later, I've got this far. I'm not too proud to admit I use filler on some of the little pinholes. They're not really pinholes, they're more like chasms. Ultimately I wasn't too worried about my welding because uh, you can see that the cross members that the, the mill sits on are actually resting on top of the bearers, so uh, they can't fall through anyway. And there we go, quick coat of uh, zinc spray and we're done. You saw me make these four inch um, 100 mil square uh, washers earlier. I, I thought it was prudent just to um, add them just to spread the load a little further. And you see there's one hole in the corner. That's just to stop them rotating. Once I've finished this, I'll just put a single screw in each one. On each corner, I added a second bearer just to uh, increase the, the strength and reduce the load on each of these pieces of wood. And again, they're screwed in with 150 mil screws. No, sorry, 100 mil screws. That is starting to look all right. I'm quite pleased with this so far. I disconnected the oil pump because uh, I didn't want it to put oil all over the place. Then I started cleaning.
I had to jack it up again because uh, um, I hadn't got the mill in exactly the right position on its plinth, so I needed to move it. Uh, and the engine hoist, I couldn't get the wheels and the frame underneath, so I, I had to lift it up by, uh, effectively, I think, about three quarters of an inch. So I can now get the hoist underneath it, which is great. I then discovered that I really needed to make a frame to lift it from. So uh, here you go, a very simple, badly welded up little couple of pieces of box section that allowed me to just lift the mill up very slightly, as you can see here, to reposition it. So now it's in its right position, but uh, it will have to come off here again because I need to finish this frame once it's all done. And that's where it's going to live when it's done. Perfect. Well, if you made it this far, thank you very much. Uh, do hit the like and subscribe um, uh, buttons because it does help the channel grow. And um, as you can see, I've started to mock up the top half of this plinth which is going to be far more tricky than I thought it was, um, than it would be, I should say. Keeping the coolant in and not off on, on the floor is going to be difficult. But more importantly, I don't mind if a bit goes on the floor. I do mind if it soaks into this wood, though, because that will make it rot over, over time. So, uh, yeah, that's an ongoing process. So uh, we'll see you in the next one for that.